Um, but I'd like to just start with uh, Genesis chapter 50, verse 20. And this is regarding Joseph and what he said to his brothers. He said, but as for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good to bring it to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. Okay. So we know about how his, uh, his brothers really kind of did him wrong, but the Lord knew aforehand that, um, their evil intentions were going to initially end up saving them. Okay. And, uh, that's something that um, we, we, in the body of Christ anyway, we, we tend to say, you know, well, you know what, what the Lord means for evil, uh, what the enemy means for evil, the Lord will turn it around to good for those who love him. And then Isaiah 1, chapter 1, verse 17 says, learn to do good or learn to do right. Seek justice and correct oppression. Defend the cause of orphans. Fight for the right of widows. And then uh, Psalms 82, verse 3 says, Defend the weak and the fatherless. Uphold the cause of the poor and the oppressed. Now, like I had said a moment ago, I was praying, okay, and regarding the situation um, at the border, okay, and um, the Lord just kind of really... Uh, he just kind of surprised me and he, he showed me something that I hadn't even thought about and um, much to my own, I think, uh, not shame, but like almost embarrassment, I think, because um, it's not anything that I would have thought about. And I'm like, wow, you know, and, and I should have thought differently, but I didn't. But anyway, you know, there's no condemnation in Christ Jesus, but thank you, Holy Spirit, for revealing this. So look at Jonah, our brother Jonah, in uh, chapter 1, verse 1, and it says, the word of the Lord came to Jonah. And this was when he was supposed to go to Nineveh. Well, Jonah didn't really, really like Nineveh. He didn't really want to go and preach the word of salvation to them at all. He, he was just real hard in heart, okay? But um, ultimately, uh, after being swallowed up by the big fish and spewed out and everything, um, he just, uh, he decided, all right, God, you win. I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to go to the city of Nineveh and I'll speak the words that you would like me to speak, even though I'm reluctant about it. And um, so he did. And we see that the nation was saved. They repented and they were saved. Okay. Now... Again, this is about divine interruption. I was praying regarding the border situation. And I know on the news, probably many of us have seen, you know, where last week they had dropped those babies over um, the 14 foot wall. And um, that completely upsets me. I couldn't even imagine. I mean, it's just really upsetting. And I know even since the elections, there's been a lot of, political politics that have kind of been a distraction. And I'm not saying that we're not supposed to vote. We're not supposed to pray. We're not supposed to go to um, town meetings and be influencers. However, we're able to, you know, for the Lord's uh, sake and righteous cause and everything, because the Lord has given us th that freedom to do this, you know, that liberty. So praise God, you know, about that. So we should do um, all that, we're able to do because we have been given that grace and that freedom. And I'm sorry, everyone. Um, hey, hey, Van. Hi, Michelle. Love you. I hope my glasses aren't don't have too much glare. But anyway, so so I was praying and I'm like, you know, sometimes in the church we want to bind and we want to come against, you know, uh, the administration and everything, which truly it's terrible. It, it's absolutely terrible. I agree. I agree. But I just want to share something with us that blew my mind. Um, and here we are. Now look at this. Okay, check this out. If Jonah had seen the end of the story, he would have understood that it was an invitation to participate in a miraculous event, an opportunity to build God's kingdom and to be a part of his eternal plan. All right, now that's regarding Nineveh. 
Okay. Are you ready? I I'm just like flabbergasted still, but praise God for this. I praise the Lord never in a million years and, and uh, I'm stupefied. So pray for me. Here we have this influx of 2 million, 5 million people at our border, right? And I know that we, we need to be concerned because where are we going to house them? Um, they're, they're testing positive for Corona. We don't want to give in to the spirit of fear, okay? But even so, there is wisdom. I, I understand. That's not to be debated. And, and then they're just going to turn around and they're not going to get ID'd and all of that kind of stuff. I got it. I got it. I I, I, I don't agree. I, I, I got it, okay? However, this is what the Lord showed me and, and it blew me away. Look at this. We as the body of Christ take the politics out of it, okay? And I know that not everything is politics, but it's, it, you know, wisdom too. But remove that as a distraction because we do realize that even, and I'm not going to bash because we're supposed to pray for those that the Lord has put over us, whether they're wicked or godly, we need to pray for them. So we pray for the salvation of DC and all those people down there. You know, look at, we, we pray for them, we do right, and then the Lord will take care of the Hamans, okay? All right? I, I And like I said, I prayed. Look at, when I, before I came to the Lord, the Lord gave me a dream. I, I, didn't, I wasn't even walking with the Lord. He gave me a dream, and it scared the poop out of me. And I drove down Route 8 to go to work the next morning. I thought the sky was going to split open. So if the Lord can do that for me, what more can he do for Nancy Pelosi and everyone else down there? So we, we, we pray that the Lord turns around and shakes that place and gives them an up close and personal visitation in the night to scare the poop out of them, praise God, and that they would receive his salvation and the fear of the Lord would be in them. Then at that point, you know what? The choice is theirs, okay? But we're to be obedient and do that, that we would live peaceable and holy lives. I understand that we're not right now, but God is greater. Let me get back to this. Now, the body of Christ, are you ready? Here, I understand we want the wall built and everything. And I, I got the whole thing. I agree with it. It, it. it was good. It was good all in a nice package, okay? But look at what the Lord showed me. And I'm still just so blown away, but I'm blessed about it because he opened my eyes. All of these people are coming in. And we're concerned, we don't have the room for them and, and everything else. And I understand the COVID and stuff, but look at if the body of Christ is moved with compassion, we don't even have to be missionaries and go to Honduras. We don't have to be missionaries and go to Mexico because praise God, he's bringing them all to us. We just have to make room. We just have to make room. We just have to make room. Hallelujah. She was, I saw those babies down there and, and I was just like, let me go. If, if I had the money, let's go get a million buses, man. And let's just go down there and just fill them up and, and bring them home. Let, let's bring those babies home, you know, in the families. And like I said, I read, if you're coming in, hi, Shirley, I love you. Um, I hope you're feeling good too. Still praying for you. But Genesis, the scripture verses tonight are Genesis chapter 50, verse 20 about Joseph, Isaiah 1, 17, and Psalm 82, 3. And then um, I was just speaking about Jonah, uh, chapter 1, verse 1, how the word of the Lord came to him. And he, he really uh, debated with, with, with the Lord. I realize that when people in flux like they are, we're concerned about our jobs. We're concerned about maybe there's not enough food in, in the the grocery store, um, you, you know, uh, there, there's so many things that we could really get stressed out about. However, I believe that the Lord is stretching us. I mean, how many times has the Lord spoke to us and, and, and said, you know, stretch out your tent pegs. You know, we've been praying for revival. And like I said, we don't even have to send missionaries necessarily. You know what I'm saying? down to Honduras, down to Mexico, down to Panama. The Lord is sending them up to us. Now what? These people need our prayers. 
the Lord's word says to take care of the oppressed and the, the widower and the fatherless and the orphan.